Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the perineum, especially the urogenital triangle. Okay, so what are the competencies here to describe and demonstrate the superficial and deep perineal pouches with their boundaries and contents, and to describe and identify perineal body, to describe and demonstrate perineal membrane in male and female. Objectives of the class would be at the end of class, you all should be able to describe the superficial and deep perineal pouches under boundaries, contents and applied aspects. And you should be able to describe perineal membrane under its formation and what are the differences in male and female. And also you should know about the structures forming perineal body and related applied aspects. Okay. Now this already I discussed like the perineum is a diamond shaped space in between the inner aspects of your thighs and anteriorly there will be pubic symphysis and behind it is like bounded by the sacrum and the cockings. Okay, so it's a diamond shaped space here. So uh, if we say the exit boundaries, so the deep boundaries would be which are like in front pubic symphysis and arcuate pubic ligament on each side anterolaterally we have conjoint ischial pubic rami and ischial tuberosities and posterolaterally we have uh, these ligaments called as sacrotuberous ligament behind tip of the coccyx these are deep boundaries which are actually actually the boundary of the outlet of bony pelvis okay and here this is the inferior view or you can say we are looking the perineum from below this is your the the pelvic diaphragm this is the pelvic diaphragm formed by levator and eye and other assisting muscles here we have opening of urethra vagina and anal canal this is a female perineum or inferior aspect we are looking for the pelvic diaphragm so what all structures are here we can see this is pubic symphysis what is this arcuate pubic ligament on each side we have ischial pubic rami and ischial tuberosity. This is tip of coccyx. This is sacrotuberous ligament. Okay, sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligament. So these were all structures which we can see from below. Now in male, from below, what all things you are able to see here? See, uh, in this perineum, we divide the perineum by an imaginary line passing through just anterior to the tip of ischial tuberosity into triangle in front called as urogenital triangle and a triangle behind called as anal triangle. Fine. So this, if you say in anatomical position, if the patient is standing, this faces, this urogenital faces downwards and forwards and anal triangle faces just opposite backwards uh, and downwards. Okay. So uh, urogenital triangle will be downwards and forwards, whereas anal triangle will be downwards and backwards. Okay, one is forward, one is backward. So, um, and now in between you can see in the center of this perineum is actually formed by a muscular structure, muscular body called as perineal body, which is supporting the pelvic organs, very important support over here. Okay, now if you see in anatomical position, this is like from inferior view, a lithotomy position when the patient is lying down with the knees flexed. Okay, and the hip flexed. So here you are able to see this triangle, which I already told you, urogenital and anal triangle. But if you see laterally, this is anterior. A patient is standing in uh, anatomical position, you can say, anteriorly and posteriorly. This is perineal body. The black is perineal body. So antero inferiorly, or you can say downwards and forwards is urogenital triangle. Downwards and backwards is your anal triangle. The central point of the perineum is called as perineal body or this is called as gynecological perineum in by clinicians actually very important support for the pelvic organs okay now uh, urogenital triangle we are discussing now exactly the urogenital triangle this is anterior triangle which actually contains in male like you can see this is root of penis so actually it contains roots of external genitalia and openings of urogenital system here you can see the urethral opening and here you can see vaginal opening so openings of the urogenital system and external genitalia exactly are the contents of urogenital triangle so anterior triangle of the perineum is called as the urogenital triangle so uh, what are the boundaries here if we consider this triangle only behind we can see we have uh, an imaginary line okay in front we have lower margin of pubic symphysis and arcuate pubic ligament okay lower margin of pubic symphysis and arcuate pubic ligament in front behind i said imaginary line on each side we have this conjoint ischio pubic rami but lower margin so urogenital triangle is bounded by lower margin of ischio pubic rami on each side pubic symphysis and arcuate pubic ligament lower margin of pubic symphysis 
in front and imaginary line behind this is the triangle we are going to discuss now this triangle will be have number of layers as you go from superficial to deep or when patient is in anatomical position standing in anatomical position you say from below to upwards but if we keep the body in lithotomy position okay when patient is lying down on his back and uh, knee and thigh and uh, hip joint flex then you go from superficial to deep okay so you have to understand in some books they are asking for superficial to deep and in some books they are saying below upwards okay so uh, anatomically we can make out this is here okay anterior part of the perineum and through inferiorly it is lying this green one is your urogenital triangle so anatomical position may this forms the anterior part of urogenital triangle okay so you can see here this is pubic symphysis so entro inferiorly now what are the structures as you go from below upwards as i said below upwards in anatomical position superficial to deep in lithotomy position so superficially we have for skin this is the cut part of the skin or you can go from below upwards this is, this is actually the sagittal section okay Oh, sorry coronal section this is the coronal section where you can see this is the skin here and then superficial tissue or fatty tissue so uh, superficial fatty layer okay skin superficial fascia contains two layers superficial fatty layers and deep membranous, membranous layer so skin then superficial fascia fatty layer in which we have second after that the second part this is actually your the cut part you can see this cut end is your deep membranous layer so this is your deep membranous layer where it is called as colles fascia or membranous layer of superficial fascia so first as you go by dissecting or by doing surgery when you are going from skin so first will be skin then superficial fatty layer then deep membranous layer these both are the both are the parts of superficial fascia after that if you remove this superficial uh, uh, sorry the part of the superficial fascia called as membranous layer you will come across these contents so this is called as the content here actually is the content of superficial perineal pouch as you go down again you can see another layer which is called as another membrane called as perineal membrane also called as inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm this grayish one this one okay this is perineal membrane or called as inferior fascia so these terms are correspondingly used so you have to make sure that you these are the alternative names for the perineum perineal membrane perineal membrane or inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm then we have contents this one is deep perineal pouch and above it will be superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm so these are the structures you have to go through or layer wise if we go from the skin to the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm we have seven structures together they are forming the perineum urogenital triangle okay now what is the cutaneous innervation of this uro urogenital triangle so this is a male perineum and this is female perineum here you can see this is the scrotum part and this is the penis okay this is the root of penis so here dorsal nerve of penis supplies this upper part uh, except the root part okay dorsal nerve of penis and in females it will be dorsal nerve of clitoris correspondingly in male and female dorsal nerve of penis dorsal nerve of clitoris second is root part is supplied by ilioinguinal nerve in genital branch of genitofemoral nerve it supplies root of the penis or the clitoris here and the labium majus in females okay so this green this part labium majus anterior one third of the scrotum or lab labium majus so root of penis anterior one third of scrotum or anterior one third of uh, labium majus by these two nerves second the lateral part lateral on each side perineal branch of posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh it supplies the lateral part and uh, two third of the scrotum or labium majus and lateral part of urogenital triangle region okay the central part here we have posterior scrotal or posterior labial nerve okay which is supplying the middle two third of scrotum or uh, this uh, labium and medial part of urogenital region okay so these are the nerve cutaneous innervation or supply to the skin of the uh, urogenital triangle very important here because anesthesia and you have if you have to give the anesthesia to this region you should understand that which nerves are supplying this and where you have to give exactly the anesthesia okay in so we can see here the male perineum here we have these posterior scrotal nerves okay this is your uh, perineal branch of posterior femoral cutaneous nerve okay perineal nerves similarly ilioinguinal nerve genital branch of genitofemoral nerve the front part posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and perineal branch of pudendal nerve this is all the innervation in female perineum 
okay now superficial fissure after skin we have superficial fissure in the superficial fissure here you have to concentrate this this green and this brown one so this is the scrotum part here this is scrotum part so uh, scrotum contains in the superficial fissure this darter's muscle also and if we go in the perineal region, this is our ischio rectal fossa region where we have lots of fat here. This region is actually your urogenital region, right? So, like other parts in our body, like in the thigh and abdomen also, in abdomen we have superficial fatty layer, deep membranous layer. So, what happens here? This is your anterior abdominal wall, superficial fatty layer, deep membranous layer. Superficial fatty layer or campus layer is continuous with the fat of the ischio rectal fossa and superficial fascia of thigh. In the scrotum, the fat is replaced by darter's muscle. So superficial fatty layer will be almost same, continuous with the nearby layer. Now deep membranous layer, what happens here, this green, green one is actually called as colles fascia. It is attached uh, posteriorly to the posterior border of urogenital diaphragm and I will discuss here in detail, but this membranous layer you have to make out that this colles fascia is continuous with the membranous layer of anterior abdominal wall around the penis and around the scrotum okay so this is actually this green one is all the membranous layer superficial fascia as such is of the urogenital triangle is divided into fatty and membranous layer so if you see here this is carpus layer of the anterior abdominal wall membranous layer of the abdomen here this one this is your superficial perineal fascia or colles fascia Okay, so this is a urogenital triangle. So you can see how it is continuous with nearby membranous layer. Okay, so if you see here, this uh, superficial fascia or colles fascia on each side will be attached to lower border of ischio pubic rami. Okay, colles fascia will be attached to lower border of ischio pubic rami on each side. This is something like this. Okay, will be attached to here. Colles fascia will be attached here. Now what happens here uh, in front? If we, if we uh, trace the colles fascia in front, you can see this is a cut part, cut edge of the fascia covering the scrotum. So here it will be continuous with the part of scrotum, similar part of the scrotum which forms darter's muscle of the scrotum. And here in the penis is cut edge of the darter's fascia of the penis. So it will be con continuous with the fascia of the penis and here it is continuous with the scarpa's fascia. So the same deep membranous layer of the urogenital region is called as colles fascia which is continuous with the scarpa's fascia the fascia around the penis and fascia around the scrotum or you can say the darter's muscle behind you can see it is upturned behind it is turned because it is continuous here with the posterior free border of perineal membrane and will be enclosing the pouch superficial perineal pouch so now we are done with the skin superficial fascia where we had superficial fatty layer and next was the superficial deep layer and superficial uh, membranous layer of the superficial fascia which is called as a colles fascia here or superficial perineal fascia the clinical importance is associated with this continuation here okay now what are the spaces because with the knowledge of these layers now we can make out so till now we reached up to college fascia skin superficial fatty layer and deep membranous layer that is college fascia as you go deep you will find another membrane called as perineal membrane or which is called as inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and this is actually we are going from below upwards in anatomical position so the space between these two layers okay Colles fascia and perineal membrane encloses superficial perineal space and the, the space as you go deep the space between the perineal membrane and superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm is called as deep perineal space so actually the deep perineal space is called as the urogenital diaphragm okay the partition actually is like a diaphragm a partition in the perineum okay this is how the superficial fascia colles fascia is continuous with the fascia of scarpa buck's fascia of the penis and tartus of the scrotum okay now this is coronal section of the male perineum what all structures we are able to see this is skin then superficial fatty layer after that we have membranous layer this one is called as colles fascia and then we have perineal membrane or inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm so this space the space between the inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm perineal membrane and membranous layer of superficial fascia colles fascia this space is called as superficial perineal space or pouch okay 
So, and then this space is called as deep perineal space. In sagittal section, if you see, this is the small area here. This is the area where we have the pouches. So, we can make out this is actually the perineum. Above the perineum is deep perineal space. And this is your superior fascia, inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. So, this is deep perineal space. And below this is superficial perineal space. So, actually, this partition is your membrane, perineal membrane. Okay. So, what is perineal membrane here? Also called as inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. So, this is the diagram where they are showing just removed everything, only membrane is here. So, it is like a triangular membrane. Okay. On each side, it is attached to inner surface of the issue pubic ramus above the attachment of crust penis. It is not attached to lower border. And the lower border of issue pubic rami, we had attachment of collis fascia. But on the inner aspect, inner surface, there will be a ridge for the attachment of perineal membrane. In front, it gets thickened, upturned and thickened to form a ligament called as transverse perineal ligament. Okay, this one here, this one. And is continuous with the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. So we can see. now uh, we can see here the perineal membrane. Uh, it is uh, like a triangular membrane. In front we have this thickening transverse perineal ligament. Behind it is uh, free, or you can say on one side it will be continuous with the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. This is perineal body. Okay. So we can make out in this a thickening here where it will be continuous with the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. This area is actually. Here, this will be your transverse perineal ligament. This is area of perineal body. Okay, in perineal membrane, if we see in male and female, this is female and this is male, you can see we have these openings, different openings, urethra and vaginal in male only, male, uh, this uh, urethral opening. Behind, this will be continuous with the posterior margin of superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and in front also. So, so it will be enclosing a deep pouch. Okay, but below, it will be continuous with the collis fascia only uh, on one end not in front okay so now if you see the differences here in male and in female and male you can see in the male we have this urethral opening only in the females we have urethra and vagina posterolaterally in the membrane we have openings of uh, this posterior scrotal nerves and vessels and posterior labial nerves and vessels laterally deep artery of penis deep artery of clitoris here this one dorsal artery of clitoris dorsal artery of penis by the side of urethra, we have artery of bulb of penis and here artery of bulb of vestibule. Now, what is the difference? Another difference here in males, there is presence of opening of duct of bulbo uterus gland because bulbo uterus glands are contents of deep pouch in males, not in superficial pouch. Whereas in females, a similar gland will be present in superficial perineal pouch. So we should know the differences. Now the spaces are, we have three types of spaces, subcutaneous perineal space or pouch, superficial perineal pouch and deep perineal pouch or space. Coming to one by one. Now subcutaneous perineal pouch is a space, this one, which is present between the superior uh, superficial perineal fascia below and uh, deep perineal or investing layer of superficial perineal muscles or fascia above. Okay, so somewhat here, not very, uh, this is not very clear actually the space, some book says it is present, some says it may not be there. So sub subcutaneous perineal pouch or space, actually it is in between the skin and the fascia. Okay, second is superficial perineal pouch, the pouch which is bounded inferiorly by this green one here, inferiorly it is bound by the membranous layer of uh, superficial fascia, collis fascia, superiorly it is bound by perineal membrane and laterally on each side there will be issue pubic rami. Okay, and this space, actually this space will be closed behind but in front it will be continuous with the other uh, spaces or you can say the fascia. This, because collis fascia is continuous with the nearby fascia, so that's why the space is continuous. That's why if rupture happens in this part of the urethra, the extravasation of urine will lead to swelling in the infraumbilical part of anterior abdominal wall, penis and scrotum. And posteriorly it is closed by fusion of collis fascia with the perineal membrane. So superficial fascia is closed behind, but in front it is open. Okay. That is a thing you have to remember. Contents are the root of penis, which includes bulb and crura, and muscles associated like bulbospongiosis and ischio cavernosus and other muscle transversely in the posterior part called as superior or superficial transverse perineal muscle. Okay, this is female perineum, this is male perineum. All these muscles are supplied by muscular branches of perineal nerve. 
Okay. Now, if this space we see in females, we have this uh, bulb of vestibule covered by bulbospongiosis, crura covered by ischiocavernosis, and just behind the bulb, there is presence of greater vestibular glands, which corresponds to bulbo-uteral glands of males, which is a content of deep perineal pouch. There is an important difference here. Okay. Vessels are the scrotal vessels to posterior scrotal or labial vessels in females branch from internal pudendal artery transverse to the perineal vessels branches from scrotal or internal pudendal vessels okay nerves will be a same similar nerves to posterior scrotal or labial nerves uh, nerves and branches of internal pudendal and uh, perineal branch of the posterior female femoral cutaneous nerve okay these are the contents in superficial perineal pouch now if you see the difference here how the female and male appears okay superficial perineal pouch the important contents are the uh, muscles related and nerves and vessels okay if bulbospongiosis if we say the bulbospongiosis is the muscle in male there's a bipinnate muscle it covers the bulb of penis and the two symmetrical halves are united by a median raphe here okay median fibrous raphe and uh, usually it has no bony attachment whereas in females it splits into two halves on each side you can see it is split into two halves to embrace the vaginal orifice and covers the bulb of vestibule okay I'm not going into the origin insertion, but important here is the action. In both the sexes, the muscle compresses the deep dorsal vein and helps erection of pannus or clitoris. In male, it uh, expels drops of urine from the urethra and contracts repeatedly in ejaculation. So in final stage of erection and to empty the urethra after bladder has emptied, that is important function in males. And in female and male both, it is actually the, it is also helping in uh, erection of penis or clitoris okay now issue cavernosis issue cavernosis is another muscle which arises from inner aspect of the junction of issue pubic ramus and is inserted into sides of undersurface of crust penis okay it compresses uh, penis uh, it come in males it compresses the penis to maintain a uh, penile erection and females it may help to promote again clitoral erection so almost same its function like to maintain the erection of penis or clitoris okay and deep uh, and transverse perineal superficialis muscle this muscle actually will be uh, attached to perineal body so its function will be more to get attached to perineal body and provide support okay now coming to deep perineal pouch deep perineal pouch you can see the corona section here this is the bladder and urethra this is your uh, the side walls this is your uh, the tuberosity ischial tuberosity now here we have above what is there and below what is there so above there will be this one superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm below there will be inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm or perineal membrane okay and if you see clearly this in female in males there will be vagina okay in in males there will in, in males we are this is passing the um, urethral opening in males we have so now we are coming to deep perineal pouch Deep perineal pouch, we can see the coronal section. Above it is bounded by superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. Below it is bounded by inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. This is urethral opening in males. On each side, you can make out these are the bulbo urethral glands in deep perineal pouch. In females, there is presence of only vaginal opening. The cut section has gone through the vaginal opening and by the side, we don't have any glands, but muscles and vessels and nerves are same. Here in a superficial pouch, you can make out easily the greater vestibular glands. This is your bulbospongiosis and bulb. This is ischiocavernosis and okay, the crura. Fine. This is female perineum, uh, female urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm is actually the name for deep perineal pouch only. So uh, if we can say the perineal membrane, above perineal membrane anatomical position, we have deep pouch, anteriorly disclosed by the presence of this uh, transverse perineal ligament. Behind there will be fusion of the membrane, two membranes, collis fascia and the perineal membrane. Sorry, uh, the perineal membrane and superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. On each side, there is uh, presence of inner surface of ischial pubic rami. Okay, contents are in male membranous urethra with the sphincter urethrae, bulbo urethral glands, deep transverse perineal muscles, internal pudendal vessels and their branches, and dorsal nerve of penis. In females, uh, in addition, there will be vaginal opening also. So, what are the muscles here? You can see urethra, sphincter urethrae, deep transverse perineal muscle, and bulbo urethral glands. In females, there will be part of urethra with part of vagina, and similar muscles like sphincter urethrae or sphincter vaginalis, and other things will be same. Okay, the name may be different, like dorsal nerve of clitoris here. Okay, and all these muscles will be supplied by perineal branch of pudendal nerve. 
and we can see the sphincter here. Okay, this will also called as external sphincter of bladder, sphincter urethra. Okay, vessels will be same internal coronal artery with its branches, and uh, there will be dorsal nerve of penis or clitoris as a content of the uh, pouch. Okay, now coming to perineal body. Perineal body is irregular mass. of variable size and consistency located in the midpoint in the line between the ischial tuberosities it forms the central part of perineum and lies in subcutaneous tissue just behind the vestibule and anterior to anal canal it gives attachment to perineal muscles play important role in visceral support especially in females so muscles are like bulbous spongiosus superficial and deep transverse perineae external lateral sphincter conjoint longitudinal coat of the anal canal and uh, deep transverse perineae when the pubic recti rectalis and vaginalis part of levator ani these all muscles get attached to the perineal body when you are doing episiotomy we have to be very careful because this structure if got get torn it comes in the tear then there will be prolapse of the structures like bladder or rectum or uterus in females now this is a side view you can see this is the urogenital triangle at the center we have this perineal body so all the structures in the pelvic cavity will be supported by this important structure okay perineal body applied aspects as i already discussed this uh, urethra may get rupture in the this part and it may lead to extra vasation of urine where the patient is coming with swelling of the lower infra umbilical part of the anterior abdominal wall penis and scrotum so we have to be careful while examination okay thank you please try to go uh, try to understand open your books and any doubts are there you can come to me okay thank you and have a nice day